This is our waves review. Let's jump right in. Uh, in a transverse wave, medium moves at right angles to the wave velocity. Uh, one of these is sort of our classic wave shape uh, where the wave is moving this way but it's lifting the medium up and then putting it back down again. That's transverse wave. Uh, a full transverse wave would look like that but again that shape will be traveling down the wave. Um, to create a transverse wave we shake up and down or side to side. We played with all that before, very straightforward. So, how would we control the frequency? Uh, we would shake faster. In this case, you are the source, not fatter. In this case, you are the source, so you would have more shakes per second. Doing that would give you more frequency. To change the velocity, we need to change the medium. So since we're talking about a uh, spring here, we would change the tension. Uh, and the big idea here is that we are in some way, any changes to the medium would do this. All right, the wavelength. So either change the frequency or the velocity. Any of those changes is going to change the wavelength. Uh, and the way that we've been talking about this is that the wavelength is equal to the velocity over the frequency. The velocity only has to do with the source. The frequency only, is that backwards? The velocity only has to do with the medium. The frequency only has to do with the source. But both of those things affect the wavelength. Uh, so if you were if you were graphing things, um, both of these are independent. They independent of the other three. This is dependent. All right, and then to change the amplitude, we would have to. Change the shaking force, harder or, or less than that. Um, and again, amplitude has to do with energy. So if we uh, do more work, we will increase the amplitude. All right. A longitudinal wave is one in which the disturbance moves parallel to the velocity. Another name for this is a compression wave. Compression waves are hard to draw, but the reason we talk about these a lot is because sound is this kind of wave. So, let's say this is our undisturbed medium. If there's a wave in it, it's a place where the medium is more compressed, and there'll be a place where it's not as compressed, and that little spot will move through our medium. So that area of compression moves through the medium. Um, so if we're doing this with a spring, we're going to pull parts of the spring together and then we'll release that compression and that compression will travel down the wave. Okay, the picture shows the position of points on a string as it moves. Uh, so what we have here is amplitude in meters as a function of time. 
So the period of these waves, period being the time for one wave, uh, would be 0 0.2 seconds. The frequency of these waves, frequency is the inverse of the period, so the frequency would be 5 hertz. What is the wavelength of these waves? Well, the wavelength is the velocity over the frequency, so 40 meters per second over 5 hertz. The wavelength of these waves comes out to be, not 80, sorry about that. The wavelength comes out to be 8 meters. Amplitude of the waves, uh, so if we look at our little graph here, the amplitude is the distance from equilibrium, just kind of like we did with uh, simple harmonic motion. So for these waves, the amplitude is about 4 meters. And then through what distance does a point on a string move during one wave cycle? So as a wave passes a point on the string, that point on the string goes up, it comes down, and then in one cycle it goes back up to its original position. So the distance, this is not the displacement, the distance that that point travels is we go 4 to 0, 0 to negative 4, that's 8 meters, negative 4 to 0, that's another 4 meters, and then 0 to 4, so that's 16 meters total. And it's distance. What is the average speed of a point on a string? Again, this is speed, so the average speed would be the distance over the time, that's 16 meters divided by the time of one cycle, 0.5 seconds. So the average speed, sorry, 0.2 seconds. So the average speed would be 80 meters per second. Now that's not the wave speed, that's the speed of the medium as the wave moves through it. Um, it's a little bit different than that. So how would these change if the frequency were doubled? We'll use a red pin here for that. Uh, so the period, if we have twice the frequency, right? If we have twice the frequency, we'd have one half the period because they're inverses. Obviously, the frequency would be double. That's what's going on here. Uh, the wavelength, we would have half the wavelength we had before. This frequency is down here on the bottom. The amplitude of the waves would be uh, not changed. And then the distance that they move through one cycle. But we would have twice the speed of a point on the string because that time would be cut in half. So twice the velocity, I'm sorry, twice the speed that we had before. All right, this is a little uh, interference pattern here. So we, we're going to have this wave shape and this wave shape sit on top of each other. Uh, so what we're going to have when they overlap is this. And then after the pulses overlap, they move on as if nothing happened. They move straight through one another. That's still moving in this direction. This is still moving in that direction. Basic destructive interference. Their amplitudes add to give me less overall amplitude. All right. So two tuning forks are very close to the same frequency, but not the exact same frequency. And the listener hears uh, beats... So we're gonna um, we're gonna draw what the resulting wave looks like. So we get a quiet spot, and then a loud spot, and then a quiet spot, and then a loud spot, and then a quiet spot. The loud spots are those beats. So explain what the beats are. The beats are the interference. Beats are the interference between two nearly identical waves.
They are loud. When the crests line up and soft well, when they don't. What we have when this happens with the uh, lining up and the not lining up are, are constructive interference when they line up and destructive interference when they don't line up. All right, so here we have a standing wave. So the nodes do a red dot at each node are here. Nodes are places where there is not any movement. And if we look at that, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven nodes. To look at the anti nodes, it's not that there are two anti nodes at this location. It's that this entire location is the location of an antinode. So what I'm going to do, since this is the actual string at any given point, is just draw squares around this antinode. But what's important as we look at this is to say that this whole spot is the area of an antinode. An antinode is where we have the most dis displacement. So if we're looking at that, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10 antinodes. Now, this is a half meter long string, and I have 10 antinodes. Each wave is a single antinode. So I have five waves in that length. A better way to say it would be 10 half waves in that length. So lambda is equal to the length over 5, that's 0.5 meters divided by 5. 0.1 meters is my wavelength. Calculate the frequency of a wave. Well now that I have, tell you what, I want that to be velocity, I'm sorry for that. So practically, the frequency is 88 hertz. So the velocity is going to be the frequency times the wavelength. So 88 hertz times 0.1 meters. 8.8 meters per second. Sorry for the confusion there. Now, suppose a person pinched the string 0.1 meters from the left edge. I'm going to erase some of the stuff that we have here. So it's a little easier to see that. 0.1 meters from the left edge is right here. This is where we're going to pinch. What changes would be observed in the string to the left of where he pinched? So, oh, sorry, from the left edge. Directions are hard, y'all. So, we're going to pinch right here. So, what would happen is that this would cease to make waves, but everything else would remain the same. So, still waves to the left, and they're identical, so there's no real change to them. Uh, and so overall, uh, we would have eight antinodes Uh, and nine nodes, and all of this is because we pinched the node. If we pinch an anti-node, we get nothing. So, suppose a person pinches the string 0.13 meters from the left edge. If this is the case, then we're not point, uh, pinching there, we're pinching here. So if we pinch there, that's not at a node. Uh, we would no longer have a standing wave. Waves would still be traveling through the string, but since they, my pinch is not at where a node would be, uh, we wouldn't have a clean interference pattern that we can look at. 
In order for there to be a clean interference pattern, a node needs to be at one of those lambda over two spots. All right. So the frequency of the vibrator is now adjusted to the next highest frequency that produces standing waves. Calculate this frequency. Okay, so what we see now is the tenth harmonic, because there are ten antinodes. And the frequency of the tenth harmonic is 88 hertz. Well, I know that that's ten times the fundamental frequency, so the fundamental frequency is... Uh, 8.8 hertz. So if I want to go to the next highest frequency, that next highest frequency is the 11th harmonic. That's going to be 11 times my fundamental frequency. So 11 times 8.8. Uh, 11 times 8.8 about 97 hertz, 96.8 hertz. That's the easiest way to do it. You could also calculate the wave velocity, recalculate the wavelength, and go back and do it. But I like looking at what happens to the frequency in terms of the fundamental. All right. So during the physics lab, a student holds a piece of pipe in the water so he can adjust the length of the pipe sticking out. The speed of sound is 340. The student holds a ringing tuning fork and increases the length until it first resonates when point 0.2 is protruding for the water. So, because we are blocking off one end of this thing, we are talking about a tube that is open at one end and closed at the other. So the shortest frequency, sorry, the shortest wavelength that we could get in there looks like this, and so the length of the pipe uh, is equal to one quarter of the wavelength, because this particular wave shape is a quarter of a wave. Uh, what that does, is tell me that the wavelength is four times the length of the pipe or 0.8 meters. With that I can calculate the frequency. Frequency is the velocity divided by the wavelength so 340 meters per second divided by 0.8 meters uh, so that velocity sorry that frequency comes out to be 425 hertz. We still have a pipe that's 0.2 meters long, but we want to get the next highest frequency. So we're going to change. We're going to change how much wave we have in there. That same length is now equal to three fourths of a wave because it's the next. Uh, it's the next shape that we can fit on there. So that makes lambda equal to 4 times 0.2, the length over 3. Uh, that makes my wavelength here come out to be 0.267 meters. And in order to get the frequency, that's going to be the velocity, 340 meters per second, divided by um, 0.267 meters. And that makes the frequency when we do this come out to be... 1275 hertz, which is three times the original. Same length pipe, more frequency. Now, if we're going to stick with the original tuning fork, what that means is that the frequency is going to stay at 425 hertz, and the wavelength is going to stay at 0.8 meters. What we're doing is changing the length of the pipe now. So we're going to have a longer pipe now, Uh, and instead of having one quarter of a wave, we're going to have three quarters of a wave on this length. So if we want to calculate the new length, that's three quarters of 0.8 meters equal to our new length. Uh, when we do that, our new length comes out to be 0.6 meters. Number eight, consider two closed-in pipes of different lengths. A tuning fork can be used to make the pipes resonate. What must be true of the wavelength of the tuning fork compared to the length of pipes in order to make them resonate? All right. So, if both pipes resonate, so we have a short one, 
we have a longer one. Now, what we need, they're not the same. In order for them to resonate, what we need is the same size wave to fit in here. Oh, I kind of did that backwards. What we need is the same size wave to fit in here, but still meet my conditions, if that makes sense. So, we must have a node at the closed end and an anti-node at the open end. So in order for it to fit into both, if we notice um, the wavelength sorry one half of a wavelength must be equal to the pipe length difference. Because that's the only way that I can get an antinode and a node at the right spot for that wave. I have to add in here one half of a wavelength. Now it doesn't have to be just one half, it could be one half or a whole wavelength or three halves, but the pipe length difference is not a quarter of a pipe or just half a meter. It has to be half of one wavelength. So, is it possible for one tuning fork to make both pipes resonate? Yes. The pipe length difference must be one half of a wavelength in order for that to happen. So, if there are odd quarter lengths of the wave, okay. is it possible for multiple tuning forks to make both pipes resonate? Yes. The pipe length difference in this case for one fork uh, must be half of a wavelength, another two halves, another three halves. But as long as the pipe length difference is full halves of a wavelength off, we'll be fine. quickly go through this. Now, as a source is moving, which is what we have here, the waves it produces in front of it are scrunched up, so we have less wavelength and a higher frequency. The waves behind it are stretched out, meaning we have more wavelength and a lower frequency. So point E is the place where we would go to have lower frequency. All right, so we have a 440 hertz string. That means we could either be, and we're hearing four beats, we could either be at 444 or 436. When we increase the tension in the string, my original frequency goes up and I hear more beats, which means I'm getting farther away from the original note, which means we're at 444 hertz. We have a train approaching and passing a man standing in a crossing. So the frequency, as it's coming towards him, is higher than the original frequency. So as we approach the man, we have a higher than original frequency. As we leave, we have a lower than original frequency. What we experience is an abrupt change. This Doppler shift doesn't depend on how far away you are, but how fast you are moving with respect to the source. All right, if I have a wavelength of 0.5 and a frequency of 120, the velocity is the frequency times the wavelength. So 120 hertz 
times 0.5 meters, 120 times 0.5 is 60 meters per second. Diffraction is the bending of a wave when it changes media. We see diffraction when the opening is roughly the same size as the wavelength. Just a definition. Person standing on a beach sees 12 waves in 6 seconds. The speed of the wave is, well the speed is the frequency times the wavelength. Frequency is the number of waves per second. So that's 12 waves in 6 seconds. Frequency is 2 hertz. So the velocity is going to be 2 hertz times 0.75 meters. That makes the velocity 1.5 meters per second. Diagram shows a wave with a speed of 320, and I want to know the frequency. Frequency is speed over wavelength, and looking at this, I have one, two, three different waves. So if it's 12 centimeters, each wave has a length of 4 centimeters. So 320 centimeters per second divided by 4 centimeters. 320 divided by 4 is 80, so that gives me a frequency of 80 hertz. We have an engineer clapping his hands. That's what engineers do. And he hears an echo 4.37 seconds later. So if we're talking about an echo, it goes down to the bottom and comes back up. So the distance it travels is twice the height of the well. Well, the distance we travel is going to be the speed of sound times the time. Uh, so let's say the speed of sound is 340 meters per second times the time of 0.437 seconds. Uh, that distance, when we calculate it out, is about 148.5 meters. But that's how far the sound traveled. That's not the depth of the So if, if the sound is going down and coming back up, the sound travels twice as far as the height. So that 148.5 divided by 2 is going to give me the actual height or depth of the well. Uh, when you do that, you get roughly uh, you get 74.3. That's closest to 75 meters. Consider the following properties of waves, which change as a wave changes medium. So as we change medium, we definitely get a new speed. Uh, but the wavelength depends on the speed and the velocity. So, I mean, sorry, the wavelength depends on the speed and the frequency. So if the speed changes, then the wavelength will also change. So it's one and two only. These waves are compared, uh, and we get seven hertz for the beat frequency. That means it could be either of them. It means the original frequency is... Um, Sorry, the frequency of your wave is half off. So what is the length of a tube? Open at one end, closed at another, resonates at the seventh harmonic with 350 hertz. So if it's open at one end and closed at another, uh, we're looking at this as our seventh harmonic. That's not the seventh possible shape, it's the seventh harmonic. Uh, that means my wavelength is equal, sorry, that means that seven-fourths of a wavelength are fit inside of this tube. So if we want the length of that tube, we need the wavelength. The wavelength is the speed, 340 meters per second, divided by the frequency, 350. So that wavelength comes out to be... ...0.97 meters. If we take seven-fourths of that we get our length to be about 0.17 meters. We have to see that wave shape. The velocity of sound is 338. What is the frequency of the fifth harmonic in a tube that that's long? If it's open, closed, open at one end, closed at the other. So, um, for, t for something open at both ends, we're talking about halves of waves. So that means at the fifth harmonic, uh, we have five halves of a wave, or five bumps in there. So that means my wavelength is equal to 2L over 5. So 2 times 0.685 divided by 5, or about 
3.74 meters. That's my wavelength. And so the frequency would be the speed, 338, divided by the wavelength of 0.274. giving me a frequency of 1233 Hertz. When we talk about something that's closed in both ends, we're also talking about um, half wavelengths. So 5 halves lambda is equal to L. Lambda is 2L over 5, giving me the same wavelength, giving me the same frequency. So even though the shapes are different, the uh, number of waves, the wavelengths, and the frequencies are going to line up for this. Now, if it's open at one end and closed at the other, we're talking about fourths of a wave. So the fifth harmonic is five-fourths of the wavelength is equal to L. Lambda is 4L over 5. 4 times 0.685 divided by 5. 0.548 meters. A wave is twice as long. Uh, my frequency is going to be 338 meters per second divided by 0.548 meters, giving me a frequency of 338 divided by 0.548. Uh, 61, it's about 617 hertz would be my frequency there.